Sure. Um, just like to begin by, by thanking uh, the Alamo Bowl and, and the staff that works uh, for the Alamo Bowl and, and what, a, what a great job uh, that they do put on the bowl game uh, throughout the week. You can tell that the people of San Antonio are, are, are happy to have us here. Um, we feel very welcomed and, and knowing I knew that going in because it was part of this bowl game uh, 11 years ago. So I know the organization and the efficiency that it's ran and it's a, it's a top tier bowl game and we're excited to be here. Very appreciative. Um, secondly, I want to, I want to actually uh, want to give a public thank you to Alex Grinch and uh, how he has ran the defensive side of the program over the last three years. Um, the thing with that is I, I don't envision the last couple of weeks going as smooth on the football side of things. If um, that's, that's, a, that's a, uh, a credit to Coach Grinch. And the culture that he installed on the defense side of the ball, um, it's made the last two weeks uh, run pretty smooth. And um, very appreciative of him on that. And I think, you know, a mark of a great leader is, is uh, you know, if, if you're not around, how does that organization run? And it's been pretty smooth on, on our end on the football side of things. Um, I'd also like to thank Coach Bob Stoops, um, obviously somebody that I have a tremendous amount of respect for. Um, obviously, we had the, have the privilege of uh, being a player for him uh, some years ago. Um, obviously, kept in touch throughout the years. Uh, I know he's had to make a lot of decisions over the past couple weeks. And with him entrusting me um, to be able to take on this role, uh, I can't thank him enough just because it's it's great experience for me and I'm excited to do this for uh, for this program. Um, and also I want to thank uh, Coach Calvin Thibodeau, Coach Jamar Kane, Coach Austin Woods, Coach Will Johnson, and Coach uh, um, um, Parker Henry. And those guys have helped me so much over the past couple of weeks. I've leaned on them a lot. Um, and, you know, none of us could do this alone, um, but they, they've done a great job with it. Um, on to Oregon, I think that, you know, Oregon is going to be a tremendous challenge for us on the defense side of the ball. Um, I've always had a lot of great respect for the offense at Oregon um, and how they do things and how they've done it in the past. I faced them uh, multiple years when I worked in the Pac-12 conference. Um, they uh, have always you know, done a lot of things with speed. Um, they've always had a quarterback that's been able to run the ball. Um, but. This year in particular, they, their, their offensive line is probably one of the best offensive line we played all year, uh, if not the best. Um, they do a great job up front. Uh, I really actually like watching the running back play. He plays very, very hard. Anybody who's coached uh, by his running back coach, Coach Mastro, who I know personally, is going to be a tough kid, and he's going to play hard. Um, but their, their backs are really good players. And obviously their quarterback is, is a really, really great athlete. And and with that being said, he can beat you in, in running the ball. He can beat you throwing the ball. Uh, he can beat you uh, distributing the ball. So uh, we got our, we got our, uh, we got a, the challenge in front of us. It's going to be huge. And then uh, they're going to have some young receivers go out. And I know they're excited about getting those young receivers out there uh, and doing some work in the passing game. Um, but obviously, a tremendous amount of respect for the for the University of Oregon football team, and and I know a lot of those coaches personally, and, and they they all do a great job. Um, so we got our work cut out for for us uh, on game day. Um, and at the end, you know, uh, you know, just kind of want to introduce these four guys. These four guys are you know one of the reasons why it's been a joy to come back uh, and work this bowl game for these 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 four in particular. Um, these four are great students. Okay, they're, they're great individuals, they're great teammates, and they're really, really good football players. And, and I've been blessed to be able to be a, around them uh, for the last three years. And uh, they'll, they'll always be close to me uh, individually and in my family and consider them family. Um, but first, we got Pat Fields, uh, one of our uh, starting safeties. Uh, Reggie Grimes is going to be one of our defensive ends. Okay, next guy is going to be Woody Washington. Uh, one of our corners that's done an outstanding job. And then lastly, the guy that um, has, has started more games around here for me uh, in the past three seasons uh, is uh, Deshaun White. And all four of these guys are, are, like I said, great teammates. They do a great job on the field. They're great leaders. Um, but really, really have enjoyed being around them in the last three years. And with that, I think we're, we're good to open it up. Thank you, Coach. If everybody could raise your hand in the front, Jenny. 
Hey, Brian, could you just talk about your decision to come back and coach the bowl game? When did you uh, come to that decision, and, and how did you come to that decision? I don't think there's really ever a decision, just as long as um, uh, it was worked out between uh, you know, both universities. And as long as they allowed it, then I was, I was all in. I, I never hesitated by doing this. And, you know, I, I, I'm here to, to, to be able to go do a job and, and do it for the, for the locker room and for, for these guys sitting right here. But um, there was never any kind of hesitation on, on my part. And, and with that being said, you know, it's, I'm excited about doing it. Question in the second row, Michelle. Brian, um, the logistics of what you're doing and what you did and where you're going is just unique. It's fascinating. It's interesting to me. Could you kind of describe that process from your perspective as individually as a coach? Um, being, being the linebacker's coach and then coach DC this game mm -hmm. and then, boom, you're going to join Lincoln in, in mm -hmm. USC. Yeah, you know, as far as um, any other institution, I think just kind of in speaking on that, I think it takes away from this locker room. Um, I think that every bit of uh, information that's talked about today needs to be about these guys and this locker room and how they're going to play um, and all the work that's been invested in order to have this bowl game. And, uh, you know, but for me individually, man, I, I'm, I'm thrilled and honored and, and excited to be able to be in this role. Um, and my job is to uh, put them in position to play well, um, give them the keys, and, and let them go. Let, let them go get after it. So, um, and that's you know that's kind of what we've been talking about in terms of uh, how things have been going over you know the past three years, the culture that's installed, and it, it really uh, is very evident in times like this. Front, front row, Elisa, please. Hey, Coach Adam. Hey. Uh, it's your first time mm -hmm. calling plays. Uh, how was that? been for you have you leaned on I know coach Venables came in there have you leaned on him a little bit as far as like you know calling your first couple your your first ball game or yeah and, and also how much has I guess coach Kane Thibodeau and all those guys have helped you as far as working on all that as well yeah um well to be honest with you I've talked to everyone that I have on my phone that's ever called defensive play so <laughs> I've talked to a lot of different people um but on, on top of that you know you know, with with uh, Coach Kane and Coach Thibodeau and, and the rest of the guys in that room, you know, it's been a collective group effort. And, um, you know, we're going to lean on each other and we'll have obviously constant communication. And, you know, the other people that, that I've talked to around this and, and it's the safeties and the backers, you know, what are they like? What are they not like? What do they feel comfortable with? What's the best way to fit this? And part of that is I want them to take ownership of it too. So we're all doing this together and trying to go get a win. Michelle, front middle there, please. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, Pat, it just seems like yesterday you were a senior at Union High School and uh, your career has really flown by. Can you just talk a little bit about this game, what it means to you, and just really wrapping your career up, playing with the, your teammates? Yeah, and, you know, the, the easy answer is it's the next game and, and – um, it's a, it's a game just like any other on the schedule. And, and that's really, you know, and I'd be lying to you if I said that. It, it's going to be a special game. Um, for me, I think it should be a special game for these guys here. And, and But again, at the end of the day, you know, I'm from Oklahoma, um, played at Oklahoma. I've been an Oklahoma guy for a long time. And uh, I want to finish it the right way. And I want to do it for the kids that's, that's in the locker room and, and these guys sitting up here. Like, it, it's to me, um, it's very selfish for a 40 year old dude to sit here and talk about how special it is for me. It's, it's about these guys. Repeat for Pete to pack you. Wait for the microphone, please. I think it might have been a little miscommunication. That was for Pat. <laughs> oh, that just said Brian. I'm sorry. Hey, I'll just answer every question. These guys just here for looks. <laughs> Did you, did you need a question repeated, Pat, or no? Uh, no, I'm good. Uh, no, it's, it's big time. Um, I just appreciate the university so much for, you know, just helping me grow and develop as a man. Um, and I think the biggest thing I can't emphasize enough is, like, the family feel that we have here. And I think Coach Odom hit on it earlier whenever he spoke. But, like, you know, Coach Grinch, Coach Kane, Coach Tibbs, Coach Odom, Coach Mann, and all those guys, here, you know, I, I consider them family. And I think um, any, everybody who's been through, you know, the Speed D era, era with them, you know, you know, consider them family because every single day they challenged us, they pushed us, they made us uncomfortable, 
But because of that, all the older guys can appreciate how much we've grown and we've developed as men. Um, so, you know, just going out in this last game with all my guys, with, you know, my coaches, because I consider, you know, Coach Odom, like, that's my guy, that's my coach. Um, same thing with everybody else. Like, I wouldn't want to go out any other way. And I think, you know, we're going to make it one heck of a game and one heck of an experience. You way up front, black shirt front. For Deshaun, um, just wondering, uh, as a guy who's a senior, a team leader here, what have the last few weeks been like? Uh, does this feel like a normal bowl game, given all you guys have been through? And if it, and if it does, at what point did it start to feel that way? Um, I don't know if any of the last few months have been like normal, um, but I would say that um, for me, it's been about really just enjoying the moment, um, embracing all the opportunities I have with my uh, teammates, uh, the coaches, like um, just spending a lot of time with them on and off the field. Um, it's, it's as simple as that to me, you know, um, just trying to make the best of every situation with this team, you know, and we got one last one to go after, and that's the one we're focused on. And honestly, just can't wait to be able to go out there and, and hit the field with these guys. So, Way to follow up in the middle. First of all, Brian, you didn't go to Union High School. What's that? You went to Ada High School. I know yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for uh, Deshaun, sorry, for, uh, for Deshaun, to lose coach, uh, not looking too far into the future, but it's probably been a strange transition, what you just talked about. Part of it is knowing that he's the guy you've been closest to among the whole coaching staff. Mm -hmm. And uh, after this game, I mean, he gets this moment to call plays, and then after this game, he's kind of moving on. What's that feel like personally? Um, it's, it's a little confusing, to be 100% honest with you. Um, I mean, I love Coach Odom to death. I mean, I mean, I'd do anything for him. Um, I've, I've tried to do my best for him, and I think that we've, we've complimented each other very well over the years. Um, like I'm, I'm really looking forward to this last one, you know. That's, that's kind of what um, everything boils down to with me. I'm really just trying to enjoy this last experience with everyone um, that was a part of this team that's been so close to my heart for, honestly, so long. So, yeah, that's what, that's what I'm really looking forward to. Second row side. This one's for Reggie. Um, with op the opt-outs and stuff, you've kind of taken a leadership role here. How has that been now that you're here, kind of reflecting on this last couple of weeks as, as kind of stepping up as the voice of the defensive line and, and stuff like that? Uh, it's been great, man. This, this whole transition has been uh, kind of smooth. You know, I, I think it's uh, – I've taken to the guys well. The guys have taken to me well. Uh, and it's just – we all have the same – we all have one common goal, you know, and that's to win. Uh, win to make plays, to, to, to be the guys that we came here to be. You, know, you don't come to Oklahoma to 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 be to to not be a dude. You know what I mean. So uh, I think uh, it's just it's been great. It's been an easy transition. Uh, we're having fun. Question: Black shirt, end of the row, please. Yeah, this is for uh, Woody. Woody, what's it been like playing for uh, Bob Stoops and uh, the the preparation for this game? What was your relationship with him like, if if there was one at all? Uh, before, uh, what was it, November 29th? And then also want to ask you about Isaac Stoops. What's it, uh, what's it like having him around? Uh, I mean, it's been great. Um, I mean, obviously, Coach, uh, Coach Bob Stoops, his uh, resume speaks for itself. So, I mean, he's been doing great things for however long. And uh, as far as Isaac and uh, even Drake, um, I kind of worked out with him during quarantine when we had the, uh, the COVID outbreak. So, I mean, those are all great guys. I love Coach Stoops and I love his family. So. White shirt, front row. Yeah, Pat, kind of in the same uh, vein there. What Your home state kid, what's it been like having Bob coach you? And have there been moments where you've seen Coach Bob come out instead of the guy that you've known the last two, three years? Yeah, um, it, it's crazy because, you know, I, I've kind of known Coach Stoops from, I guess, more of a unique position than other guys just because, you know, me and Drizzy and Isaac, we played against each other back since high school. So I know them both as a uh, – as like a coach who recruited me and also kind of like as a person. But, you know, just having him here, I think, you know, like Woody said, his resume speaks for himself and he's like a legend. And I think the way he's came into things and embraced things kind of like solidifies him that much more as being like a legend and kind of like speaks to the type of program that we have that, you know, we can call a Hall of Fame coach literally like off the golf course to come in and coach. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I think that speaks to, you know, what the University of Oklahoma is. And then also as well as, you know, seeing all the players that, that – reached out on Twitter and support. You know what I mean? I think that speaks to the university. But uh, just having Coach Stoops as a coach, you know, I think it raises the intensity, the competition, 
of practice and I think all of us we kind of just want to play up to the standard that he that he set you know what I mean it's like we're playing for a legend so everybody has to take and elevate their game to the next level and I think he's been he's been pretty cool with us you know we got to negotiate you know our curfew and all that so he's been very <laughs> cool with us um but I think the biggest thing is he doesn't really have to take it out of us. I think we want to like elevate our game because we're playing for him, if that makes sense. So he doesn't even have to, you know, come crazy. It's just everybody wants to like live up to the legend status of him. So everybody's kind of taking their games to the next level. Thank you, Pat. Front there and then Jenny. Our second row two on the end, please. Back. There you go. Ryan, you mentioned all those um, everybody you know, called them by phone, talked to them by phone. Uh, what they tell you about calling plays? Be yourself. Really? Yeah, be yourself. Let, uh, let your personality come through. And uh, a lot of it was just kind of, um, you know, they, they, they know me. They know the, uh, the preparation habits that I have. Um, trust your preparation. Would you so, say it was like a couple dozen? What's that? How many, like how many people would you say you talked to? Uh, probably close to ten. Okay, thanks. Front row, Elisa. Brian, I assume Bob wasn't negotiating any curfews with you guys back in the no, day, was he? Okay. No, we didn't get that in negotiation. <laughs> <laughs> Just thought I'd check. Yeah. I actually wanted to ask Reggie and Deshaun. Um, you guys, I think, are around some of the coaches that decided to come back for this game. Um, what, what have you seen and just the challenge? I mean, they obviously wanted to be here. They wanted to coach you guys, but they're probably thinking about moving and new housing and families and I mean all those sorts of things logistically have you noticed any stress or do you sense them sort of able to balance it all Reggie you want to go first then Deshaun uh yeah I'll take it um not necessarily you know I think it's more of uh focus on the main thing and that's that's this next game and it is a little bittersweet, you know, just realizing that they won't be our coaches next year, but they'll still always be our family. So as far as that's concerned, man, we're just going to go out and play balls to the wall for them. Deshaun, did you have a follow-up on that? Um, not really. I really agree with him. Um, I'll keep it at that. I, I agree with him. Thank you. Front row, Michelle, please. Black shirt. Yeah, you know, uh, for Woody, um, just wondering uh, what your early impressions are of Brent Venables, uh, the, the guy who will be leading this program moving forward, and, and the staff he's putting together, and all of that. Or, or have you mostly been focused here on the on the Alamo Bowl? Um, honestly, I've just been focused on this uh, this next game. I mean, kind of like Reggie said, we all have one common goal, and that's to win. I mean, but as far as Coach Venables, it's kind of like Coach Stoops. His, his resume speaks for itself. Um, he done. He's been, he did a great job at Clemson. A great job when he was here at OU the previous time. So I think as of right now, I'm just trying to focus on this next one. Though. Back row, uh, Woody. I would want to follow up on that question. I know that you want to look towards this game only, but I, I got to ask you. We haven't had a chance to talk to you much. I know you're a guy that has an opportunity to to move on if you would like. Do you know about your future? Is this going to be your last game at Oklahoma, or, or are you still trying to decide that? Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely coming back next year. So. Behind you, Michelle. Just. Ryan, this one's for you. I know this is kind of a more of a news question, but those COVID-19 protocols, what are, they, what are the players following? And then is there testing? What's involved with all of that? Well, you know, um, being a part of the, the COVID era uh, at the University of Oklahoma was one that, you know, the university did an outstanding job uh, being able to get us through the 2020 season. Uh, the majority of our um, staff and players are vaccinated. Um, we are masking within meetings. Um, and other than that, we're following our typical protocols, which I would envision would be uh, as strenuous as anybody there is in the country. And the whole uh, point of that would be so we can play the game. Um, furthermore than that, you know, the, the, you can't control what goes on 24 hours a day, especially whenever uh, you live in a hotel for a week um, and they're going to have free time. So uh, there's some certain things you can't control, but on our end uh, of the university, talking, speaking for the university, we're doing, you know, our fair share of, of uh, our protocols and to ensure that this will go on. Michelle, front row blue. 
Hey, Brian, I got a two-part question for you. First of all, we talked about the importance of quarterbacks. You mentioned it with Oregon. Can you talk a little bit about Caleb and what you've seen and his, his, just his maturity grow through the season when you guys go good on good? And then also I want to ask you, when Bob Stoops arrived in, to take over the program, do you see any similarities to how he entrusted himself with that team back in the late 90s to compare it to what he did this year? So you said this is for me, right? It, I'm correct. Joking. That's correct, right? I'm joking. Um, you know, being able to go against uh, Caleb Williams, I just, you know, go back to, to spring ball. And one of our linebackers named Shane Witter. Shane's one of the fastest guys on the whole team, okay? Shane was playing a position where he would be responsible for the quarterback on a quarter on the zone read. Caleb outran him to the sideline, and I was really confused about, I thought Shane wouldn't give him great effort because of uh, Caleb beat him to the sideline. Come to find out, Caleb Williams runs about 21 miles an hour, so he's obviously a threat uh, when he carries the ball. He's got a tremendous release. Uh, the thing I do like about Caleb, though, is his energy and uh, his leadership ability from the quarterback position and just being able to, to be a likable guy. And, and a lot of times you can kind of measure that when your own, when my own son goes up there and he goes to practice. And he goes and, sh and you know, handshake or dap up my, my, my 12-year-old son. So, and he doesn't necessarily know that that's my son, but he's just, that's kind of who he is. So, um, I think he's a special one. Um, and would you say the, the second Can you part wait of for the microphone, please, for the second question? When Bob arrived, is there a yeah. lot of similarities between the two times? Yeah, there's a, there's a, a definite, you know, in, in the team meetings, um, at practice when he's got everybody around, you definitely kind of have that same feel. Uh, that we had back in the day, you know, and, and his uh, his genuine, how genuine he is, his uh, his um, the way he handles the group, the way he speaks to them, um, you know, you, you know, it's 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 very sincere. Um, he's serious about it. He wants to win, and there's no question about that. I think that he's made no uh, no secret of that. But um, he definitely commands the room uh, whenever he talks. Hey, front Jenny, front row. Hey, Brian, you mentioned uh, in your opening remarks some of those guys that have taken on defensive duties who I think are largely analysts or uh, mm -hmm. doing, doing different roles. Yeah. Can you just talk about how you all decided, you know, who to pull in and what, how it would all be divided up? Yeah. Well, um, you know, the NCAA has certain rules about, you know, how many people can wear headsets, how many people can actually have headsets with microphones. So um austin woods was one of those that he, he's an analyst so he was not able to wear a headset with a mic so elevating him to be um, a full-time coach for this game allows him to be able to talk on the on the headsets during the game which is going to be very valuable because austin is uh, extremely intelligent does a great job uh, in the box will johnson and parker henry were already um, on the field assistants so we kept their roles basically the same Will's taken a, a bigger role in the defensive backfield, and, and Parker uh, has taken a bigger role in the defensive backfield as well. Um, but we've been meeting, a lot of our meetings have, um, whether it be the whole position meeting or, or portions of the position meeting, has been the whole back seven. Um, so that's been, a, that's actually, I've really enjoyed that um, from my point of view because I got to see how good these safeties are and the nickels are in, in meetings. and how they communicate in meetings and how they are able to identify stuff in meetings. So a lot of that stuff uh, was very beneficial for, for us as backers to be able to be in the same room and hear it and see it. Um, and it's, you know, it, it gets you excited every time you go to the position meeting that you, you, you're going to get feedback and you're excited about uh, the things that these guys know. Front and then back. Yeah, Coach Odom, uh, you talked about Will Johnson, and he's, he's a younger guy, played here. Uh, he was also, I think, believe out on the – y'all had him during the, 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 the transition between coaches out on the road recruiting. Can you talk about his growth in, the, in coaching yeah. from the time, you know, mm -hmm. you first got here up until now? Will's one of those guys that um, you knew he always had it in him, but his growth from year one to year two has been – I mean, it, it's been pretty substantial. Um, the the places that Will is a really does a really really great job is the one on one. If he's sitting there talking to a kid, talking about technique, 
or if he's talking to the kid, watching film with them. And it's uh, he's really, really good as far as technique, and then his knowledge of the scheme is 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 outstanding from the back end perspective. So, uh, but his growth to being able to take ownership of that, and, and and his growth as a coach, I think it's been I think it's been very valuable for us as a staff, but also it, it it's going to prove um, he'll he will uh, he will benefit from that in the future for sure. A couple more in the back. Coach, I know one of the first things we asked Coach Stoops about when this matchup came out was the last time OU and Oregon played, and I know that you know all about that as well, but curious how much these guys know about that, that last time in 2006 because they were all a lot younger. And Just curious, has that come up much at all during bowl prep? No, uh, not really. I think in terms of it's, it's, it's our, you know, and, and something we talked about early on, um, the first time I talked to defense, you know, they, they're in a very similar place that we're in as a program. And um, it, now it's going to come down to our locker room versus theirs. And who, who's going to be more excited about being out there? Who's prepared the right way over the last two weeks? Because these guys are smart enough to know that the game in, we say it was 2006, um, doesn't matter. You know, it has no, no bearing on this outcome of this game. And they, you know, I think they've done a great job of buying in to the, to the fact of, uh, you know, it's, it's about what we do and our preparation that's going to be the, that's going to determine the outcome of the game. Final three questions there, there, and there. Brian, uh, with your relationship with Alex, uh, I wonder if you could maybe describe some of the things you learned from him that you're going to impart in this game. How much, maybe as an additional question, how much is what we're going to see Wednesday night going to be what Alex's defense look like, and how much is going to have your imprint on it? Well, we're going to see a completely different defense. Okay, we're going to run cover zero the whole game. <laughs> All <about> blitz. <laughs> They said, put your personality on it. So that's what, no, I'm joking. My job is to, is to reduce any kind of stress or any kind of things that would weigh our guys down. Go out and play fast. Play the defense that we know that we've ran for the last three years. Um, in terms of play calling and things that, and, you know, and talks with uh, Alex over the years, um, you know, what's your next call and who is now put in stress by that formation or that play call. So what person on the defense am I trying to protect? What person on the defense am I trying to hide? What person on defense in a certain situation do we want to kind of um, take out of the game? So there's some things that go into it. Obviously, um, I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm, I know what I'm doing because I haven't done it yet. So um, we'll, we'll see how it all goes on, on game day. All right, last two there and there. Did you get it? Jenny, you get yours? Okay. No, I'd like Okay, you, Lisa. And then Brian with the last question. Hey, Pat. Obviously, a month or so ago, fans of the program, you guys within the program, a lot of turmoil when Lincoln leaves. And I think when Brent got hired, there was a sort of a renewal of people's spirits. But this is the first time you guys have obviously been on the field since then. How important is it internally to play well? But do you feel like the, there's some impact on the larger – Sooner Nation, if you will, how you, how you guys play? Um, I think it's just living up to what the standard of the University of Oklahoma is, not particular to a coach or a situation or whatever. Um, I think, you know, the university demands a high level of football play because that's what we've done historically, uh, even before, you know, Coach Stoops, before Coach V, um, talking Barry Switzer and all the, all the legends that have came through here. Like, the standard has always been to play excellent football. So, you know, for us, we're just the, the 2021 team, and we're doing our part in ensuring that the standard is upheld. But <clears throat> I think, you know, Coach V, he demands a very high standard. And I think um, I'd be naive to say that, like, this game doesn't mean, like, a, a little bit more because, obviously, this is my last game here. This is my last game with, you know, Coach O, my boys, and all my other coaches. So, like, I'm willing and ready to give, you know, whatever it is that I have, you know, for this game and to, to come out with the W. And I think, like, there is, like, a little bit of emotions that are going into it. So, I'm not going to, you know, negate that. But I think we've just done a, an incredible job of, like, keeping the main thing the main thing. And, like, we have our duty and responsibility whenever we sign to come to OU to live up to the standard that OU's created, not a particular coach. Or, or player or situation or anything like that. Thank you. Brian, wrong question. 
Pat, we saw you practicing your Spanish the other day <laughs> and know that you were on a quest to find some horchata. Yeah. So have you been able to find some or any other Mexican food? So I found horchata last night for the first time. And then I, I went to La Margarita, something like that, the, my first night here. So. All right. Thank you, Coach Odom. Thank you, players. Thank you.